All right, good day everybody. This is Matt Webb with UT Extension of Marshall County. I've had some questions about electric netting, so I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to use electric netting. There's many companies that produce electric netting, um, so be sure to just use a search engine on your computer. Type in livestock and electric netting, and they'll all come up. They come in various sizes based on the livestock needs. Um, some of them are shorter, some are taller. Um, this particular net here is 164 feet long and it's 35 inches. This works well for sheep and goats. Uh, some of those that are used in poultry netting uh, will be 42 inches and maybe um, you'll notice in between, maybe a little bit more narrow than what this one is here. I think there's 12 inches between other places here but there's just very small electric uh, wires that are flowing through these and so that's what gives it its ability to to uh, keep animals in but I'm going to walk through here and show you how we put them together this is one of my older nets here I've had this net for almost 15 years now I think and so we try to do a good job of taking care of them so as you're taping them up and what I normally do is I use my right hand to hold them and I pick up my left hand. And the reason for that is there was one time I lost my wedding ring. So if you got jewelry on, you may want to remove those before you do something like this. But I was holding, holding the excess netting in my left hand and lost my wedding ring. And fortunately we was able to find it. And so I've gone to using my right hand to hold the excess and use my left hand to pull. Uh, the post out of the ground and so as you're pulling the post out of the ground you just kind of hold them out in front of you and bring that excess to you as you're going along and they all just kind of slide together and then when they should get to the end of the net and get ready to untie uh, here's a trick to make sure that you do not get these nets tangled up because they can be a bother if they get tangled. So you're gonna lay them out flat on the ground. You have strings on both ends. And you're not gonna wrap the wire around the post. What you're gonna do is you're gonna walk to the end here and try to get them uh, pretty uh, consistent with one another and you start to roll the net toward the post okay and once you get to the end just like when you're rolling up your your cap row or your or your sleeping bag it's the same idea so you'll take one of those uh, strings and tie it around and you're ready to go to the next place or put them in the storage okay so we're not wrapping around the post we lay them out flat, we roll them to the post, and then we tie them off like you would a, um, a camp row. Okay, so we're going to put these back out again. Show you how we stretch them out, put them in the ground. So untie them. Lay them out fairly flat. Take that one post. Tie it off to your fence. I have to use a slip knot just to make it easier for me. And what you do is you'll stretch this out behind you. We let one go. All right, a lot of times what I like to do is kind of hold it up so that next post doesn't get caught in the spot as you're moving along. This is a single spot, they do make a double spot. But what I've learned that if you're in rocky ground, it's a lot easier to find one hole than it is two holes. So if you're in some rougher country, uh, you might wanna use the single spot. And also be aware that as you're stretching these out, any kind of uh, knobs or anything that might be in the ground that you might catch on to be careful about that 
these nets are real handy um, for using in vegetation management. And uh, in this case here, uh, the reason that we are blocking this area off here that has the flags is that's where our garden is going to go. And so we're going to try to keep the animals out of the garden. So they're real handy for separating areas that you're using for something else. And I've used these nets uh, on very brushy areas. I've used them along creek banks. Um, they're just very flexible for doing some of the things that you may want to do that you can't do otherwise with your livestock. So, you notice there, there's one, one trick there. You can use a step-in post to help make it kind of a corner. And uh, one thing about this particular field here, this net's 164 feet, but my field here in this section is not that wide. And so, as we get closer to this five wire high tensile fence that separates the field, we're gonna have some excess wire. So what we do in that situation, is I got another step in post. Take this step in post and we got a string on it. Right. And we'll tie it onto this post and that becomes a corner. Let's make sure we're tight first before we do that. Personally, I like nice straight lines, but there's not always going to be a case where you have a nice straight line in these. And sometimes if I got excess and I don't have a step in post with me, um, what I will do is, is I will make it, the net go zigzag and I'll take up some of your excess netting. So for time purposes, you can kind of see how I put a net up. Just be sure to keep, pay attention as you're stretching it, make sure you don't catch it on any roots or stobs in the ground or anything like this. If we go back up here to our step-in post, uh, we can tie it off to a main post to kind of help keep that netting tight. You don't want it so tight that the netting itself starts to pop off on these these different little rivets and stuff. Uh, this is an older net, so I've had that case many times before, and had to go back and add a little bit of wire to those uh, to this net to keep it going. But as we get here, there's some different ways to hook up this this netting to a hot wire. This is the end here that, that comes from the manufacturer. And so um, it's got a little space there that you can kind of slip over the wire. And it stays pretty snug on there. But there are times where we might have to use an alligator clip. And these are kind of handy if you're in an area like, for instance, we've got a corner like this. We don't have anything to attach it to. We can kind of roll that end of it off where I snapped it off, strip some of the plastic away from the wire, and then we can hook it to the fence. Uh, to get real resourceful, you can take a old jumper cable, and it's the same thing, and if this is handy, in case you have to, to stretch through a fence where the hot wire is not on the same side as the electric netting, and so this is insulated, you can slip it through, 
and uh, then it attaches that hot wire and then you don't grind yourself out so same deal it looks a little rough but it does work so one last thing on on repair you can see here where i actually had a i actually got this snagged um and uh ended up getting pulled out so what we done there is that we cut them all the same length and when you get ready to um to tie these back off what i do is i loop it several times over the wire because you got if you can see the little silver wires that that's what's going to get your shock and so when you have to do repair i like to wrap it around several times before i make a knot to make sure that that those little wires are connecting to each other and so electric netting is very handy uh, particularly in areas where um, it's hard to get any other kind of fencing in there uh, some rough areas if you want to clean off creek banks or, or ditches or anything like that uh, just be aware that you don't get them snagged on anything or um, pay attention to make sure anything can't fall on them hook them up to a good fence charger if you're in those situations um, but this is real handy for for both small and large operators and like i said they make them for for all species um they'll make them for sheep and goats they'll make them for poultry they'll make them for pigs just be sure to use your search engine on your on your um, computer and who to look up livestock and electric netting so with that i'm going to end if you got any questions be sure to check out marshall.tnc.edu at our UT Extension Marshall County website and I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this net up. I hope everybody has a good day.